hello and welcome to a new let's play of a rom hack this, this time we're playing the dragon herald by uh big mood and they also go by the name uh let's put the plan check out my notes here again uh sigma raven yeah that's right and the reason why oh well, there's a couple reasons why i picked this reason number one i played through this a bit i played like three chapters and it was really good like, I enjoyed myself thoroughly, the writing's solid, and uh, it seems like it has a lot of promise, so I'd like to dedicate a full Let's Play to it. Uh, the other reason was I read through the README for this ROM hack, and uh, something about it struck me in particular. I'll read from it for you. It says here, The Dragon Herald was a personal exercise in talentlessness with two goals, to, to be completed with as little personal skill on the part of the developer as possible, by using community resources for everything, and to be entirely complete upon release. Theoretically, anyone could have made this game, which is a testament to the great strides in FEGBA ROM, ROM hacking, or as well as hacking here, but ROM hacking made by the community. And I felt like that was a nice, um, a nice message. It was it shows appreciation on the part of the ROM hacker for the community and it shows sort of like a humility towards you know it's not just their work this is the, the community's work and it's in, its in a sense so uh, I would like to give it a try and I would like to uh, try to play through this whole thing and hopefully have a good time doing so so I need to actually erase data because I have started a bunch of files here, you know, just testing things out. And um, we're going to start a new game. It's locked to hard mode, so I don't get to pick a difficulty. And we get the introductory text. Since the beginning of its history, Orsia had been embroiled in war. Whether it was a war of fates or of nations, conflict never ceased. It is written that the dragons gave a gift to man to end the cycle. For those who revered the dragon's powers, a herald would come forth. This prophet would help guide each generation into a peaceful era. Still, war continued, but the heralds were able to end it each time. In the year 1260 of the Dragon Mark, three nations reigned following a brief but terrible conflict. The Empire of Rodel, ruled by Granmore, the Lord of the Knights. The Theocracy of Varius, ruled by Eshima, the Dragon Cardinal. The Kingdom of Folga, ruled by Borgen, the Unyielding Sage. The Fifty Years' War, which saw the deaths of two heralds, had ended. Folga, an ancient kingdom that had persisted since even before the heralds, found itself a victor in the war, having expanded its borders. The Empire of Rodel had emerged from the war, consisting of both the existing Kingdom of Rod, and the smaller city-states that had been annexed as a result of war. Various and island countries south of the mainland had remained neutral. To, to avoid engulfing the land in war yet again, the three entered a pact. Each year they would hold the summit of nations to discuss grievances. Now, twenty years after the war, a new herald has emerged. Prologue. Troubled Waters. A nice sea breeze is perfect for a hot summer's evening like this. It wouldn't be bad to live out my life like this with just us two. Ah, there you are, Heralds. I was afraid that you had fallen off. I was just sea-gazing with Sala. It is enjoyable watching the waves and listening to the crashing water. Would you not agree? I recall doing the same thing during sea voyages in my youth. How are you finding this journey? To speak as a representative of the faith before the three nations, it is quite an imposing task, I admit. Bishop Jota has helped me to focus my thoughts and receive a divine message, but I'm still a bit nervous. I suppose the duties of the heralds can weigh heavily on a young mind. To speak of the divine revelation granted by the dragons, and before the gathered heads of nations at that, one would think the dragons should allow children their childhoods. 
It is said that empty your heads are less wont to misinterpret. Well, in a more tactful way, but I don't mind the truth. Besides, my predecessors died to discharge their holy duty. So that we may have the peace that we now enjoy, I would feel bad complaining too much about my own duties. Well, for the brief time that you're with my men, it will ensure you a safe and hopefully swift journey. Ah, thank you, Taiga. You must be lonely, though, as well. This ship takes us far from our home. For mercenaries, such travel is simply an inevitability of life. Still, I imagine you must miss your family greatly. I have a task to perform. For now, I must simply abandon myself to it. Hold on a moment, something approaches. Har har, a fine night to be traveled in the seas, yeah? What business do you have with us? I'll be taking the lassie there. No hard feelings, eh? A pirate abductor. Harold, please escape below decks. I will handle this. Don't think you'll be getting away that easily. You didn't think that a pirate would fight fair, now did ya? Please get behind me, Harold. I will deal with these scoundrels shortly. Sala and I will support you if you get hurt. My sword should be, should be in Sala's bag somewhere as well. Take caution. My life is but one of many. The end of your life could spell the end of countries. I understand. What's all the... We're being boarded. Gods, there goes my beauty rest. Stow it, Lawrence. We must defend the heralds. Bird, Lawrence, glad to see you're safe. I have the herald with me, so focus on taking out the boarders near yourselves. And so it begins. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to keep animations on for, like, turn one. And, uh... For everybody. Just to show off their palettes and animations. But I'm going to turn it off afterward, because this hack uses mostly uh, default animations, which is totally fine. Like, you don't have to go out of your way to make custom animations for everybody. In fact, I tend to prefer the default ones. I think they're really smooth. So we're just going to look at each character now. First of all, we have the Herald. Name, her name is Yu, just to clear out, clarify any community, like, uh, just to make things not confusing. Her name is Yu. It's, it's not like you are the Herald here. Yu is the name of the Herald. Not an avatar. Traveling Herald from various. Canny, but dutiful to a fault. Class is Herald. Clairvoyants who maintain peace. Most are skilled in healing. And her stats are on the screen there. Uh, you can't view growths in this hack, which is totally fine, but there is a... Uh, there, there is a link to a spreadsheet which has growths, but I haven't looked at it. I don't feel the need to, honestly. Anyway, she has an iron sword, a heal staff, and a pulmonary, and can use both of those things. Kind of a troubadour, as you can tell from her look, but you can use swords, which is pretty cool. Then we have Taiga. Uh, clearly a Jagan of this hack, although his portrait kind of reminds me of Oife for some reason. Probably the mustache and the hairstyle. Once known as a famed cell sword, has become more agreeable with age. And he's a hero. His stats are pretty neat. He's weak on resistance, but solid stats everywhere else. He's carrying a silver axe, an iron blade, and a pulmonary. And has an A rank in axes already, and a B in swords. And over here, we got Bird. A mercenary working under Taiga, serious and devoted to her boss. Level 9 Knight. Uh, there's, her, there's her stats. She's got an Iron Lance and a Vulnerary and C rank and Lances, so pretty solid unit. And we've got Lawrence. A mercenary working under Taiga. Something of a slacker. And he's a soldier class. Those are his stats there on the screen. And he's carrying a Slim Lance, which is nice, and a D rank and, and Lances. So... Uh, there is a like, worldwide range hack thing here, uh, so we can see everybody's ranges right away. What I'm gonna do is 
try to bait these mercenaries. Well, thing is, I'm not sure I can very easily, because they'll probably just go for Taiga, unless I move him this way, which I could totally do. Just rush the boss. I think I might actually do that. So, let's see. I could just go for this, I think. Okay. This is Sacred Stones, so the RN, is, RN list is probably the, the same, and there is a low number in the beginning, so that's why you kind of always crit on the first attack. A lot of people use that trick with Erica to crit the first bandit in the prologue, too. Anywho, that bit of trivia out of the way. Let's... Uh, you attacks for 7 and takes 11, but it's pretty dodgy because she's got a sword, so we'll rely on that and put her there. We're going to back Lawrence here to let the mercenary hit him. And then Bird will just stay where she is, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. The goal is to finish this quickly, not uh, like killing everybody, which would take a long time. So you can kind of see everybody's ballots, they're pretty clean. Lawrence is a green soldier. And there we go. Now we can just turn animations off that we've... Yeah, actually haven't... We only saw Tiger when he attacked on the player phase, so we're good. I'm just going to do this now. And, uh... That'll be a solid hit, then you could probably finish him off. But the thing is, the boss uh, moves in this. So we do have to be sli slightly careful. Just do that, and we'll dodge. And I'm going to keep you out of the next pirate's range, but obviously in range of these three. Because... Well, it's fine. We'll just finish off these mercenaries now. So far, combat's pretty smooth. No huge surprises, but... Um, this guy has a hand axe, so... Can't really do anything to him on enemy phase. It's okay, though. We can have Taiga do this. Now this mercenary's coming. You can give Lawrence a break and let Bird stand here. You can literally just stay here until she gets hit. So now that guy's kind of in the way, unfortunately. And we should probably finish this guy off now. Get him out of the way. I'm gonna pull you back. And pop a vulnerary. You is safe in this corner. I'll have Bird finish you off. Let's move Lawrence up. Moving back may not have been the wisest decision there. Orange should move back, and Bird can stay here. We'll 
We'll finish this guy off. And... I'm gonna stand here and just pop another Volnari. Head behind Taiga, basically. From the other pirates. Please, lay down your arms. The fight is over. There's no need for you to die. Ah! You're a lot strong, but my employer is stronger. Who sent you to do this? We can talk in length once I sail away with you in tow. Okay. You cannot kill this guy, but he can. She can kill this uh, pirates for us, and then Taiga can finish this guy off. All right, that's the end for me. We're safe, thank goodness. I wish that were the case, but during the fight, enemies appeared from within our ship. I'm afraid that we can no longer trust the crew below, save for my soldiers. What are we to do, then? We'll take the ship that your would-be kidnappers arrived on. Perhaps we can catch their boss off guard in port. I see. I'll trust your judgment, of course. But why would they have targeted me? The portent has always been a boon for all. Perhaps they thought to extort money from the faith? Regardless, it's an unfortunate truth that more fighting awaits us in the morning. I understand. I will steal myself. And that's the end of the prologue, Troubled Waters. Then you get a good taste for the central conflict in the story. You get a good taste of uh, the Heralds and Taiga. Like, who they are as people. And, uh, hopefully, you're looking forward for, to what's to come. But this is going to be the end of this episode, so thank you for watching, and I hope you tune in for the next one. Have a good one.